you had just spoken at a dementia conference that we were having at the University of Alabama. And we met you later that evening and heard you speak in a, in a church in our town. I brought my mother, who had just had the same walk with my dad as his caregiver. And I told you that uh, she was having a hard time. And you said, let me sit with her. And you did. You sat with her and talked to her about godly suffering. And you shared with her about, uh, about that. Would you speak to me for a second about godly suffering? Yes, I think that uh, the Apostle Paul, in his second epistle to the Corinthians, speaks about suffering that is incredible. In chapter 4, he's in a near-death experience, or chapter 1, and then chapter 4, he speaks of that near-death experience. He then catalogues, uh, at the end of his epistle, all the different sufferings that he's had of flogging and stoning and imprisonment and shipwreck, all sorts of things unimaginable. And it's been estimated by scholars that 10 strong men could scarcely have borne and survived what he went through. But in the middle of all of this, he says in chapter 7, verse 10, that the pain that is born of God, that is to say brought into God's presence, where God becomes relevant to the suffering because of the suffering of his own son on the cross. That that pain that is born into his presence has a salutary creative effect that enriches us for the rest of our life. But then it goes on to say, but the pain that is of man, that in self-reliance, in a stoic fashion of repressing all your own emotions, you carry yourself. He says, the pain that is of man, the stoic pain, brings death. It destroys us. And so the wonderful thing that a Christian has in faith is that he knows that he's never carrying the pain or the caregiving on his own or her own. It's always in the light of the cross. It's always in the light of a suffering saviour.